Welcome to Divine Intimacy Radio, a co-production of EWTN Radio and SpiritualDirection.com, where we provide you with a spiritual haven of rest and explore the riches of the wisdom of the saints and the path to union with God. This is Dan Burke. Welcome to Divine Intimacy Radio, your radio haven of rest. And then Stephanie usually says, your hermitage of the heart. And then I say, your monastery of the mind, where we lift our hearts and minds to heaven to draw on the wisdom of the saints, the magisterium of the church to help us to navigate this difficult ba- life of faith. And the battle we face now is quite, quite strong. Stephanie's not with me today because our studio only has two cameras and two mics. Now we have, God be praised, we have a new studio coming, we're building right now, in Montgomery, Alabama, that has four mics and and uh, multiple cameras. So she wasn't able to be with me today, but I'm excited about our guest today. He's a good friend. His name is Terry Rumor. He's a lifelong resident of Birmingham, Alabama. He's been married to his high school sweetheart, Charlotte, one of the nicest women I've ever met in my life, for 26 years. And together they've raised four beautiful children, which I can attest to. And now they're enjoying their first granddaughter. I, I'm on my, we're on our first granddaughter as well. Wow. This is your first uh, first grandchild. Both, both, when was she born? She was born uh, in November, uh, November the 10th. Boy, you're going to, I hope I That's get okay. that right. That's okay, no, just I the month. You're, you're a man, you're a man. I know, so you, you, oh boy, pass, you might right? get me in trouble there, Dan. Yeah, just the year and the month, you know, something yes. close. Sometime a year ago would be Sometime, okay too. Yes, you still yes. get a pass. But um, yeah, don't ask me when Ava Grace was born, but I know it was July, <laughs> but she's a couple of years old. So uh, Terry is a third generation business owner along with his brother. They own Southern Armature Works and Southern Radiator Cooling, where the Rumor family has been serving the Birmingham community for about 790, I mean, 90 years, <laughs> 90 years. Terry and his family are members of the Cathedral of St. Paul, where, where he established the Birmingham Fraternist Chapter, which is what we're talking to, about today, and served as its commander for five years. He's now on the national executive team, where he serves as a new chapter development officer, where his primary role is helping folks come to discover the beauty and work of Fraternus. Absolutely. So welcome to the show. Well, I'm thrilled to be here. This is uh, exciting times for uh, for myself and also for Fraternus. Uh, I'm I'm uh I, the, one, the reason I wanted to have you on the show, Terry, is is I think Divine Intimacy Radio. Everything we do at the Avila Foundation is about reproposing the mystical patrimony of the Church. What it means to be have an authentic relationship with God. Why? Because that's that's why we exist, right? But also to strengthen the faithful in the midst of uh, a very difficult time in the church. The reason I wanted to have you on is I when I learned about Fraternus, I it was it's something I wish I I had known about or was available to me, you know, for my kids. And I really um, believe in the power of what you're doing to equip men, brotherhood of men. Absolutely. To help them, help fathers and young men know what it means to live a heroic life of virtue. So maybe tell us what is the purpose of Fraternus, and then I want to shift to kind of your personal experience with it. Absolutely. So, I mean, as we know, it's, you know, life is all about our relationship to the Heavenly Father. Yeah. And, you know, when we say Heavenly Father, so often um, the word Father draws us to a father wound, that mm-hmm. we may have. I mean, we we know that masculinity has been attacked for generations. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the way the devil has gotten to the church and to culture is to break down the family, mm-hmm. to break down the role of the father in the family. And so often our direct relationship to God, our heavenly father ties back to the relationship that we have with our father and the memory of that and the hurt of that. And so when there's a memory and a wound there, it directly impacts our relationship with God, our heavenly father. So fraternus is a way that we can really address that wound in brotherhood where we come together as men and it, we open up ourselves to discovering, rediscovering virtue, what it means to be an authentic Catholic male, uh, to, to bring virtue into the life, both in, in our personal lives, in our marriages, in our business relationships, in our relationships with our sons and daughters, our children. 
It is just an incredible opportunity to come together as brothers and to d- rediscover what God wants to offer us in our masculinity. You know, that's a big di- issue in our time, isn't it? Because the you said authentic Catholic male. In our time, of course, uh, and I don't, I haven't had a TV for too long, for a long time, so I don't know what goes on out there. But when I got rid of mine, which was more than a decade ago, all the male figures on the shows were idiots or Absolutely. bad guys, the cartoons, you know, they're buffoons and all of that. And it was already, even back then, deteriorating and becoming an anti masculine, really, society. What does it mean to you? What do you mean by authentic Catholic male? Well, so so God has given us a right to rule first ourselves, right? Where, where we have to take control of sort of these um, the, the 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 vices that that well up in our hearts, mm-hmm. and then we have the a right to rule our homes, our our, our dominion at home, which is really just a, a a small microcosm of the church. Well, the world has told men for generations, like you said, that we are incapable of that. We're mm-hmm. incompetent. Mm-hmm. Uh, to be a, a male of the world is often to be misogynistic, to be over-sexualized, to be over-athletic, to pursue the wrong things. Uh, Fraternus seeks to right that wrong. It seeks to reintroduce virtue, which the three letters of virtue, V-I-R, mean man. Mm-hmm. To have virtue back in the life of men, to then allow us as men to regain control of our domestic homes, to regain control of our vices, of the things that plague us in our life, because we all deal with sin. We mm-hmm. all are dealing with that, and we need brotherhood through Fraternus to help us deal with that sin. So what Fraternus does is give us a formal way of doing that in something that uh, you know is very powerful. It's a, it's a weekly gathering called Frat Night where we get together, and, and it's just a very simple thing. Men like simple but we like simple things and you wouldn't know it. But uh, I mean, in all reality, frat night is nothing more than eating, playing, praying and learning together. It's just very simple, as I said earlier. And Fraternus gives us that opportunity to gather, to get together, to learn about the life of virtue, to relearn from each other, to hold each other accountable. Well, accountability is huge. I mean, it's proven that men cannot do things on their own without accountability. The military gets this very well. They understand brotherhood in the military. Sports teams gets it very well. Um, when you are sacrificing for yourself, it's very easy to make excuses. It's very mm-hmm. easy to give up. When you're isolated. When you're isolated. And that's what the world wants to do, right? The world wants to isolate men. In fraternus. We gather together in brotherhood, holding each other accountable. And when you know you are accountable to another man, you want to succeed for that man. Because you're you're showing up every week. Is it week? Every week? It's a weekly thing. You're showing up every week. uh, And so how do, in terms of accountability, how does that play out? Well, so, you know, first of all, this is often where the rubber meets the road. It's a weekly gathering. A lot of men will say, oh my gosh, I can't do this thing weekly. But think about all the things in your life that we need to perfect, whether it's the life of prayer Mm -hmm. or just taking it even more basic, whether it's sports or some type of musical instrument, you have to practice it. And we know we've accepted the idea of practicing every single day for something that we want to perfect. Business in particular or schooling or whatever, right? Whatever. People spend thousands of dollars and hours Absolutely. doing all of that. And then when they're when they're asked, you know, it, it's a little bit silly to recoil at uh, an hour or so a week. Absolutely. For the sake of your soul, your, your family, for your soul, for, for virtue, your, for souls, for, for the sake soul. of your family. I mean, absolutely. For your marriage. Can, can I re, can, I want to affirm you in one thing. It's really important. You said you're talking about the need for people, for guys to be together, to grow spiritually. St. Catherine of Siena, the, the God the Father revealed to her, and I'm paraphrasing, that we are designed in such a way that we are insufficient in and of ourselves to get to heaven. Yeah, We're designed with deficiency that has to be filled by other people through mutual interdependence. And in this culture, what, what the enemy is trying to do is separate us. Once our young men on computers playing computer games alone in their basements and wrecking them. 
Oh, in in a world where we have this so-called social media, right? We have never been more isolated in all of history. And what you're doing is a very Catholic thing. It's a very incarnational thing. It's like, and it seems incredibly basic, but when you understand it in the context of culture, is let's get out of the basement, let's get out of our own little lives, let's come together. And and it's not just powerful for the for the young men because you don't. This thing isn't a program. You said it's a brotherhood. It's it's powerful for all involved because you're coming together in community and reestablishing, in a sense, something that's been completely lost in the last uh, I don't know fifty hundred years. Oh, it's been totally this Catholic community is totally wrecked. Totally wrecked. And you know, it's important that you understand that this is not a program. I mean, yeah. there have been so many programs in the church. Um, that don't work. They've proven yeah. to fail. Yeah. Um, this is a brotherhood and it's a brotherhood of men that just happens to include all the way down to the fifth grade. Mm -hmm. So you never graduate out of the program. We involve men of all ages, of all stations of life, single, married, grandfathers, parish priests, always parish involved. priests. We have five parish priests that come to our, uh, to our frat night at St. Paul's. It's just incredible to see these priests first be men. You know, we forget that priests are men first. Right. And oftentimes these priests carry with them into their priesthood, the wounds of their masculinity. Right. So we're there to even help priests as they help you. Oh, it's unbelievable. We ask nothing of them, but when you ask nothing of priests, then they want to give even more. Right. Yeah. It's, just, it's just a beautiful formula. That's it's an awesome. absolutely beautiful formula. That's awesome. Well, we're, we're getting close to the break. So when we get back from the break, I want you to talk about why you initially got involved. I mean, what was your personal ground level motivation? Uh, folks, if you want to learn about Fraternus, go to fraternus.net. That's F-R-A-T-E-R-N-U-S dot net, fraternus.net. And I guarantee you, if you get involved with this program, I've seen the fruits. I've seen, uh, of course, Terry and his family and his kids and a lot of the other young men and, and men who've been involved with this and it's had a very positive impact on them it's been inspiring to me from the outside a little bit sad because i wasn't able to get involved with this so i want to talk about after the break your personal why and then i want to you know i think some people are going to ask the question well is this like a, a catholic um, or new, another version of the boy scouts sure. so it's certainly not that but we'll we'll talk about all this when we get back from the break Hi friends, we wanna personally invite you to check out all of our upcoming retreats here at Avila. Head over to spiritualdirection.com forward slash events or click on the events tab on the top of spiritualdirection.com and sign up now for one of our powerful mini retreats, setting the captives free or into the deep or divine intimacy in marriage. Now with both live and online options, our mini retreats can be live streamed right into your living room or parish meeting room. Discover why these events sell out time and time again. That's spiritualdirection.com forward slash events register today there is a growing need for well-formed solid spiritual directors in the church today the avila institute in collaboration with heart of christ spiritual direction program offers a certificate in spiritual direction for those who feel called to accompany others in their journey towards god the program is grounded in ignatian and carmelite spirituality based on a catholic worldview and draws on the wisdom of the saints with an emphasis on biblical principles in the new evangelization this program offers both online and on-site classes Discover more and apply today at avala-institute.org. Welcome back to Divine Intimacy Radio, your radio haven of rest. I'm Dan Burke, and I'm here with Terry Rumor talking about a beautiful brotherhood emerging in the church uh, that's having a huge impact on men, uh, dads, their sons. Fraternus.net is the website where you can find this beautiful brotherhood called Fraternus. Tell us why, Terry, that you got involved initially with Fraternus. What was your motivation? What were you looking for? Sure. So I've always had a heart for uh, both mentoring and brotherhood. Um, and quite inappropriately, I poured myself um, into sports. Mm -hmm. Athletics really became something that I thought was going to fulfill that need of brotherhood and, and mentoring. And certainly there is a, a, a use for sports. Sports can offer some things, particularly at younger ages with young men. But we live in an over 
emphasized sports culture, particularly here in Alabama. I mean, let's just be honest. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just it's, it's a, just it's a God here. It's over the top. <laughs> yeah, it's over the yeah. top. And it became over the top in my own life. And God revealed to me that as you approach the the upper echelons of sports, the the uniqueness and the individuality of a person really is dispensed for their utilitarian value, for hmm. what they can offer to a team. And I found myself even, you know, looking at these young men that I had mentored early in, in age and when they could no longer provide for my wins or losses, I, I dispensed with them. And it made me ashamed. Hmm. And so I got out of sports altogether, but I still had a heart for something. I wanted something. I knew there was something there. Just by happen chance, I happened to stumble upon Fraternus in a in a uh, uh, a couple's uh, dinner that uh, we had brought down a speaker. Actually, a mother from here in Birmingham had brought down a speaker from Nashville. His name is Danny Snyder. And he came down to talk to us about this thing called Fraternus. I'd never heard about it before. And I knew immediately, I knew immediately that this is what God had for me. And the funny story is that my my wife really, she had asked me to go to this. I normally don't go, uh, decided to make a last minute decision to go. And then at the last minute, my children were called away. And so we were going to have a date night. And my wife turned to me and said, hey, let's not go to this dinner party. And I, something in me drew me to this dinner party. We ended up fighting all the way up to the footsteps of this house. I mean, it was like the devil was attacking. He just knew that if I walked through that threshold, that Katie bar the door, it was over. Well, I prevailed. My wife was disappointed. We walked through the house, but within two minutes, you know, you know, Charlotte and how loving she is. She walked up to me and she whispered in my ear and she says, this is why we are here. And this is what you have to do. And that's, you know, that that's how it all started here in Birmingham. And so uh, a, a, as we began to develop fraternity in Birmingham, I prayed to God for 12 men and six boys. I knew that the men were the heart of this. They're the key because you have to have the men. Boys want to be around good, virtuous men. We're going to find a club, a culture, a, a, a tribe. That's just how we're built. That's why you have all these you know, these online gaming communities and these social media communities, these jogging groups. And yeah, those sports. are all distorted expressions. They're, distorted. No, they're not. Some of those aren't bad jogging groups and, and that not. sort of thing. Hiking. Gaming is very destructive. Yes. But that but why why do why are people drawn to game with other people? It's this it's this it's this thing that God's put into us that says you must be with others to be healthy and whole. Absolutely. But it's destructive in that context. What you're doing is reviving a more holy context. Absolutely. So we, we, we gathered together, and as I prayed for these men and these young men to, to arrive, lo and behold, we ended up, I think, the first year at the cathedral, we had like 35 men and about 40 boys. It was an incredible experience. How hard was that to do, though? Well, I tell you the unique thing about it is, is that it is very difficult to go up to younger boys and to introduce yourself and to engage them, particularly in the in in the ways of of Christ. Mm -hmm. It's easy to kind of entice them with sports or Boy yeah. Scouts or hunting or fishing. Yeah. But when you're trying to encourage them about the life of virtue, I found that it was a lot more difficult than you would expect. But it's built into us to be paternal. And when we tap into a community of men who can then see what their paternal strengths are, their fatherhood strengths are, it's unbelievable. It's like that MasterCard commercial that says, you know, this is cost this and this costs this, but fatherhood is priceless. Yeah. And when you tap into authentic fatherhood, what happens in the community at the parish level, in your own homes, in your own prayer life, it's just unbelievable. And people want more of that. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And I asked the question, how difficult it is? You answered the question well, but I'm, I'm asking a slightly different question. How hard was it for you to, to build a fraternist community in the cathedral? I mean, how long did it take? What kind it was of... not hard. Okay. It was not hard because I think, I think men really want something. They know, we know inherently something's off. Yeah. We know the culture's off. We know the messaging that we're hearing from advertisements and from the news media. It's off. It's wrong. It's a lie. Right. We're oftentimes handicapped or crippled and to know how to, to fix it, how to do it. You know, God gave me the ability to talk. 
uh, the, the, you know, the excitement for this, the passion for this, which is why I found myself in this position nationally to kind of recruit, you know, new yeah. chapters. So it wasn't particularly difficult in Birmingham. You just go out and ask, invite, invite men. Men want to be invited. And one of the things I found that, that really worked with men is challenge them. Men want to hear a challenge. They want to respond to a challenge. So I would just challenge my, you know, these men. Yeah, you just say, hey, we're, we're getting together. And how would you say, how would you do that? Well, it's funny because one of my best friends in, in life, uh, his name's Jeremy D.P. Yeah. and I didn't even give him an option. I just said, you're doing you're this coming. with me. <laughs> this is what we're doing. Right. right. And, uh, and, and other men followed suit. And once you begin to tap into that, it's, it's really just, uh, it takes care of itself. Now, how did you approach our pastor, Father Jerabic with, or was it Father Basil? Father Basil him? at the time. Yeah. So how, how did that go? Was that easy as well? Uh, it was not as easy. Yeah. Um, I think that, uh, sometimes pastors, as we talked about earlier, are, are, somewhat skittish about another program yeah. in their minds. This is a program, but it's not a program. It's not a program. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying that I knew that for sure, you know, a hundred percent when I first started, but I've come to develop and understand that. Mm -hmm. But uh, we prayed a lot and I mm -hmm. uh, just, I had to be patient. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an impatient person by nature. And I think the Lord was teaching me a little something. And so uh, it took months and months of prayer, but I'll never forget. I was out of town and I got the call from, Father uh, Basil, and he he just said, uh, "Okay, let's do this." Awesome. And it was just an answer to prayer. That's awesome. Can you give me a story, just a anecdote of uh, maybe an impact of fraternus on the life of a man or a young man? So one of the most I think significant things that occurred was we were at Ranch, um, which is an annual gathering. It's an right? annual gathering, right? It's actually a national gathering. It happens once a year. It's an mm -hmm. incredible gathering. And, I got word that a young man who had a golfing scholarship, from tremendous golfing talents, and had been looking at different schools all across the country, um, made a decision to stay in Birmingham for the sole reason that he could be close to a fraternist chapter. Now, wow. Uh, so he went mind, to school in Birmingham. Went to, went to school at Sanford University because – he needed, he knew he needed to be around men to hold him accountable. That's awesome. He did not trust himself in that college environment. And we all know what colleges are like. Yeah, yeah. He he knew he needed that brotherhood. I knew at that point, and this was several years ago, but I knew at that point we were doing something significant. That's awesome. Why is it different than Boy Scouts? I mean, what's it's not a Catholic version of Boy Scouts, right? It's not. I mean, we're not teaching skills, how to tie knots. I mean, all those things are important. I mean, okay. You know, uh, our opinions of Boy Scouts aside and where that's headed. Yeah, of course. Uh, we, we're focusing primarily on virtue, on teaching virtue. Mm -hmm. We do that, like I said, through sharing a meal together, mm -hmm. which is significant. We do that through dodgeball, which yeah. is an incredibly <laughs> impactful game to play. That's no pun intended. No pun intended. <laughs> and, you know, we play dodgeball because every school in the in the world bans dodgeball. And so <laughs> right. we're like, you know, we're playing dodgeball. And there's something very powerful about seeing a priest mm -hmm. hurl a ball at a 12-year-old. I mean, it's <laughs> awesome. And and you talk about growing vocations. When, you, yeah. when these young men see these priests out With there them. be real men. Yeah. I mean, that's just powerful. Yeah. And then we do this through what's called the King's message, which is a delivered message by the commander or someone within the chapter that talks about the virtue of the day. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have prayer. I mean, prayer is such a significant part of what we do. So it's very simple. I mean, yeah. men need simple. We don't need to yeah. overcomplicate this. Yeah. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So in, if guys, if there's guys listening or moms listening or whoever listening, priests listening, who want to engage with you and get uh, this this um, fellowship, this um, brotherhood ignited in their parish or brought to their parish? Uh, do they go to fraternus.net or is there a better way? Can they reach out to you directly? How does that uh, work? They do go to fraternus.net. Uh, there is a uh, there's a button, a tab. I think it says uh, what to do next or start here. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll click on that. Uh, there's a question air that you have to kind of answer you know what is important is that we are parish sponsored you have to have the support of the priest mm -hmm. you do have to have a location something that you know will accommodate groups uh, where, where you have classrooms and you have a place to play a place to eat mm -hmm. so you answer those questions it will then trigger an email to the national team which gets triggered to me with your contact information and then i will reach out to you and we can have a discussion 
There's a training process that occurs. You know, not everyone who wants a fraternist chapter will get a fraternist chapter. We grant fraternist chapters, but it's important to us that we start well mm -hmm. and that you have the right fundamental things in place. You know, I don't know how much time we have, but what's beautiful about fraternists is that a lot of times the questions will be, you know, what are you doing for the girls? You know, how do we help the girls? Well, the first answer I have is the best thing we can do for the girls is to put virtuous men <laughs> In into life. the community, yeah. into their yeah, lives, right? Yeah. But also God has given women a unique perspective and a unique intuition to know that there is something fundamentally wrong in the world. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes the first contact I have about fraternists is from a woman, from mm -hmm. a mother, a grandmother, a DRE, someone who recognizes, hey, we're missing something and we need something. So even if you are a woman out there, reach out, fill out the paperwork or fill out the fill out the online form. And then I'll get back to you and kind of give you some instructions as to how we need to go about getting a chapter in your area. Does this affect the church's budget at all? Well, there is there is a financial component to that. I yeah. mean, you, generally, we have a way of fundraising. It's not look for what we offer. We offer like 26 meals a, a, a year. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very low cost. We have very low overhead. Nothing that I do, I'm paid for. I mean, it's mostly men like myself who are so passionate about this, who who give of their time. We have very low overhead and we're very, very few paid staff. So it's not super expensive. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I could strongly encourage you out there listening. It, I believe in this enough that even in our community, we have a, what we would call approved apostolates. And when we looked into fraternists, we thought this is really important. We got to present this to our community so that our members who are looking and who are concerned about uh, developing fellowship and brotherhood and, and, and helping men understand what it means to live a life of virtue in a time that militates against that, that this would be an important tool in their tool chest. So it's fraternus.net. Thank you, Terry, for all the good you do and for being with us today on Divine Intimacy Radio. Absolutely. So our time is up. So next time, so until next time, may the God of peace make you perfect in holiness. May he preserve you whole and entire spirit, soul, and body, irreproachable at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Learn more about the interior life. Visit spiritualdirection.com. Divine Intimacy Radio is a co-production of EWTN Radio and spiritualdirection.com and heard worldwide on the EWTN Global Catholic Radio Network.